I want to start with a confession. I used to believe the six small meals a day script. And I don't think I had much of a choice because I was a vegetarian. Because I was hungry all the time. Then I listened to patients, hormones, and physiology. And I realized something simple. If grazing all day really stoked your metabolism, cows would be shredded. They're not. And you're not a cow. You're a beautifully designed human whose metabolism runs better with rhythm. Eat, rest, repair, repeat. Quick favor before we dig in. Drop a comment and tell me where you're watching from and how many times a day you're eating right now. Or just put a heart in the comments if you're enjoying this content and want to spread it to more people. Here's the big idea. You don't need six small meals to keep your metabolism up. In fact, frequent eating keeps insulin up, locks fat storage in, and prevents your gut and cells from doing important cleanup between meals. When you stop grazing, you give your body time to burn stored fuel and time to heal. Let's clear the biggest myth first, the thermic effect of food. The calories you burn digesting food is real, but it's not half your daily energy. On average, it's roughly one-tenth of your daily burn depending on what you eat. Splitting the same calories into six snacks doesn't magically multiply that effect. Total intake and what you eat matter far more than how often you eat. The real traffic cop here is insulin. When insulin is high, fat burning is low because insulin tells fat cells, hold what you've got. Every eating event creates another insulin pulse. Carbs more, protein some, fat the least. Stack those pulses all day, and you spend most of your time in storage mode. Mechanistically, high insulin suppresses hormone-sensitive lipase, the enzyme that releases fat from fat cells. Translation, constant snacking keeps you on the glucose treadmill and off the fat-burning highway. Your gut has a voice in this too. Between meals, the migrating motor complex, the gut's housekeeping cycle, sweeps leftover debris and helps keep bacteria where they belong. Every time you nibble, you punch the time clock and send housekeeping home. When you allow several hours between meals, many people notice less bloating and a calmer gut. Closing the kitchen lets the janitors work. Now hunger is not a moral failing, it's a rhythm. The hormone ghrelin rises around the times you usually eat and falls afterwards. If you train your body to expect food every two to three hours, hunger will knock every two to three hours. But ghrelin adapts quickly. Give yourself a new schedule and those waves calm down. Hunger is a tide. You don't have to feed every ripple. Let's talk about how fewer, better meals feel in real life. I'm a busy doctor. Most mornings I fast. Not as punishment, but because I'm not hungry and my brain is clear. The mental freedom from not thinking about food every two hours? That's like deleting 47 spam emails from your day. My patients say the same. One to three intentional meals are easier to live with than constant snack management. So what does this look like? For most adults, two to three meals. Protein forward with natural fats and minimum refined starch and sugar. Inside an eight to 10 hour eating window works beautifully. A common pattern is a late morning meal, a mid-afternoon meal, and if needed, an early dinner. If you're metabolically healthy and active, two meals might be plenty. Early eating tends to play nicer with circadian biology. Late night meals usually mean worse sleep, worse appetite signals the next day, and more hangry. Macros matter for satiety and insulin. Your protein turns on fullness signals, helps preserve lean mass, and has a higher digestive cost. Fat adds staying power with minimum insulin demand. Carbohydrates aren't evil, but refined carbs are like tender for insulin. Fast match, fast spike, fast crash. Protein can raise insulin a bit, especially if you're insulin resistant. But paired with fat, it generally produces steadier glucose and better satiety than a carbohydrate heavy snack. Let me give you a simple ramp on you can start this week. Step one. Keep your regular meals, but eliminate mindless snacking. If you truly need something, make it a deliberate mini meal with protein and fat, not a blood sugar roller coaster. Step two, pick a 10 hour eating window that fits your life, say 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. or better, nine to seven, and keep your three meals inside that window. 
Step three, on a couple of days, try two meals, late breakfast and early dinner. Build each around 30 to 50 grams of protein for most adults. Add natural fats, salt to taste, especially if you're low carb or carnivore like me, and keep ultra processed foods out. Step four, settle into the pattern you enjoy. The best plan is the one you'll keep. Pro tips from clinic. When a hunger wave hits outside your window, set a 20 minute timer and hydrate. Unsweetened tea or water earlier in the day. Most waves pass. Consider rather you're salting. In low insulin states, your kidneys waste sodium. So many people feel better with a bit more salt if blood pressure allows it. And remember, whole foods have a stronger satiety signal than ultra processed snacks. Your body knows the difference between steak and snack cakes. So does your energy. Nuance matters. Are there moments when more frequent, smaller meals help? Sure. Early pregnancy nausea, post-bariatric surgery, very high calorie endurance training, and some GI conditions where small volumes are better tolerated. And if you're on insulin or sulfurureas, don't change meal frequency without working with your clinician. We adjust meds first to prevent lows. But for most adults trying to improve metabolic health, two or three solid meals beat six grazes. Fewer insulin pulses, better gut housekeeping, steadier energy, and an easier life. So you may have heard that digestion burns 60% of daily energy claim if you're eating all day. That number belongs to your basal metabolic organs, the brain, liver, heart, kidneys, not the cost of digesting constant snacks. Thermic effect averages around 10%. And you don't get more of it just by slicing the same calories into more pieces. So no, you don't need to keep tossing twigs into the fire. Build a good log and let it burn. Here's the freedom part. When you stop grazing, you discover you're not beholden to the pantry. Your focus sharpens. Your energy steadies. You feel more in charge of your day and your health. I see this in clinic all the time. Fewer meals better markers, and a calm mind. If this helped, hit like so more people find real metabolic health education without the fluff. Subscribe if you want more doctor-led, root cause content on insulin resistance, fasting done right, and protein for meals that actually keep you satisfied. And tell me in the comments, are you team one meal, two meals, or three meals? You don't need six meals a day to be healthy. You need meals that matter and space between them for your body to burn. Sweep and repair. Eat like a human, not a grazer. Your future self will thank you.